at the Avera 2016 conference. I'm talking to Robert van der Hoed, University of Amsterdam. He's sitting on a big database of charging information. Which cities and how many poles and how many records do you have? Uh? Well, we've got four cities, one region. So the four big cities in the Netherlands, Amsterdam, The Hague, Rotterdam, Utrecht, and the metropole region Amsterdam. We've got about 3,000 charging stations now, 6,000 charged poles and about 2 million charge sessions. So it's really a lot and I think one of the most worldwide, uh, most uh, enriched data, uh, data How source. many of them are added every month for that? How many about sessions? About 140,000 sessions a month uh, are added. Okay. How fast is it growing year to year now? Um, nearly a factor two I would say in one and a half years. Okay, one and a half years. Okay, so every 24, 24 months uh, Effect, uh, 18 months with a factor of two. Okay, what are the conclusions? Uh, what is the average, uh, average amount of sessions a charging pole is used per week? Uh, every week about uh, between 8 and 12 and we see big differences between uh, Amsterdam and Utrecht which are doing well and a number of other cities which are slightly lower and we need to understand what that is. Yeah, one of the the difference was not that big, right? I mean between 6 and 12 yep. and Amsterdam is number one because they have a lot of taxis and they have a lot of uh, go car, car, to go. car to go. Yeah, so car to go and the electric taxis are a major factor that really increases 25 to 35 percent of charge sessions in kilowatt hours charged. I would uh, advise every municipality who really wants to make a good charge infrastructure yeah, start no. using car to go, start implementing, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, we love car to go and it's really easy and it's really a fantastic uh, scheme. What other uh, conclusions can you draw about the kilowatt hour, average amount of kilowatt hour per charging pole? Uh, every charge pole, uh, I would say, has about, I believe, 10 to 12 kilowatt hours per day, uh, give or take. Most important, I would say, is the long chargers. The long chargers are really occupying a lot of the time, and there's a lot of long chargers who are charging their car, occupying charge points more than 48 hours. In fact, we know that long chargers... During the weekend, uh, uh, During the weekends. Yeah. Which, which I can imagine. But the long charges of weeks, that's a different ball game. And really? that really adds to connection uh, burden. Uh, and what percentage of the total amount of occupancy time is now these long chargers? I would say that 3% of all charge sessions contribute to 20% of the all occupying time. And that starts from about 46 or 48 hours of charging. So okay, so there's 3% of the people, 3% of the charging sessions Take longer, longer than, than 48 hours? There we go. Come on, charge after after eight hours, people should be charged uh, for it, right? I can imagine it's 48 hours, but after that, we should really no, think 48 about hours. Percentage. I mean, after 24 hours or after eight hours, I think it's completely asocial uh, because it's a very, very much a scarce resource. It's true. I can imagine in this phase that you're a little bit lenient, let's say, on the longer chargers. But I think this is going to change in the next couple of years. No, we should not be lenient to these long charges. If you leave your car tw 48 hours at a charging station, you're an, a an asocial person and you should be severely punished. Just, But that's a political statement. Um, you said, that you, do you, what do you know about these people uh, who are charging? Do you know the car? Do you know the gender? What do you know? We know, uh, we don't know the, ch the car, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, we know the, the length you of the don't know the car, you nope. cannot identify the car. We don't have an identification of the car, but we're developing an app now that you can, that people can use to identify cars on the spot. And uh, that's been registered so that we've got a better idea what kind of car we have. Now we can trace cars slightly because we know that batteries in these cars have slightly different decharge and charging uh, schemes. Yeah. So based on these data, we can do some good guesstimates, but we cannot uh, filter everyone out. Okay. So I'd like to know who, of who those long charges are. If they're Mitsubishi Outlanders or even worse, Toyota Priuses. But okay, that kind of information has to come. How open is this information uh, of your database? At this moment, not yet. Uh, the municipalities are, for the obvious reasons, um, uh, reluctant to share this information open because of commercial aspects and privacy issues. But we we're definitely discussing the ways how we can get it more open and make it available to a broader use base. Mm. Where can we find all the graphs and the information? What website? Idolaat.nl I-D-O-L-A-A-T dot N-L Okay, go find your information there. Thank you.